Sometimes dreadful adversity can be your greatest gift. You turn that pain into progress, well, that's a mindset shift. But not everyone's strong right off the bat. It takes time to be mentally tough and counteract. See, we're all broken, some confined in a prison of our mind. Have compassion realigned by being kind, don't undermine, or quick to judge their storyline. For everyone has a mountain to climb. Ask yourself, when people look for light, do you bring them darkness? Because how can you help the lost when you're bitter and heartless? So what did you become because of your past? Let me say it again, what did you become? because of your past has your life crashed and now you judge others because you're not happy living in your house of glass who are you really no who are you really if your life was a movie would you get an oscar for authenticity do you know that anger is one letter away from danger so love your haters communicate don't escalate be the peacemaker be compassionate and patient for everyone is broken some scars are visible and some invisible as their innocence was stolen. Hatred kills your spirit, but kindness, it's contagious. Go step away from bitterness and let the world see your greatness. See, your past doesn't have to make you a prisoner and give you a life sentence. Be intense with your sick sense and listen to your intuition. Don't convict yourself with false allegations like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, let go of those frustrations and lift your head up and say, I am a beautiful creation. It takes time to heal and sometimes you learn to live with the pain. Listen, there's no time limit on grieving, so don't be ashamed. But don't guilt yourself to death with emotional starvation. I'm here to tell you that your current situation is not your final destination. Now is the time to make peace with your broken pieces. But if there's hate in your head and hate in your heart, wouldn't you say that a case of victimitis is one of the worst diseases? So take responsibility for the direction of your life. Proclaim. If you complain and blame, that's the mindset you'll remain. So activate your brain. you paid life's tuition. Now go get a reward for your pain. Sometimes all it takes is one word or one phrase that turns desperation into motivation and gives you the courage to change your ways. But are you addicted to being a victim? If so, evict that negativity. Fight your fight. Don't let your thoughts hold you in captivity. Are you controlled by the negative voices in your head? If so, take back your life and get back up. You're not dead. So kill your excuses. Your life is a gift. Here's a life lesson. Forgive others. Now that's a beautiful plot twist. To be real, your greatest teacher is your last mistake. Your advantages are in your mind and in your faith. So concentrate, educate, and don't instigate hate. You never know the life that you can save. This is motivational speaker Derek Clark. You can find out more at www.iwillnevergiveup.com. Iwillnevergiveup.com. Chit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast. Each and every week, I kid you not, amazing guests from all walks of life, just having fun conversations on this encouraging podcast. Today, my guest wrote her first song at the age of 10. 10 years old, are you kidding me? And she's been pursuing her dream ever since. Raised on a dairy farm in rural Iowa, she has opened up for some amazing musicians, just to name a few. The Bellamy Brothers, Lori Morgan, Air Supply, and one of my all-time favorite, Colin Ray, and many, many others. In early 2021, she became a mom, and she added author to her amazing resume as she transformed one of her songs, Share Your Shine, 
into a children's book. She currently resides in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm so excited to have her on today. Author, mom, musician, Elizabeth Mary. This is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one dollar podcast. Hello. Hey, how are you? I am so good. I was like getting, I, I've got a toddler like you probably have seen, but I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot to ask if this was audio or, <laughs> or video. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have to fix myself if it is video. <laughs> no makeup required for this podcast. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited so I'm to have so- you on today. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Before we dive into some great conversations, I love picking my brain, my brain, my guest brains. Ooh, I need more coffee. <laughs> and, and, and shooting some icebreaker questions at you. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. So I, do, I do five because this little okay. portion is brought to you by Takiza. It's a lo- local taco shop in the area, and they have five kinds of tacos. Are you a, a taco connoisseur? I love tacos. <laughs> and, and you got a local, local spot there, or you like them homemade? We, um, oh, a little bit of both. I'm starting to like get better at cooking. So trying it myself. Nice. All right. Here we go. Question number one. What three hobbies have you always wanted to try, but never been able to? Um, I would say sports. I'm just not great at sports. I mean, I try, <laughs> uh, sewing. I wish, I wish I could sew. I think that would be like such a great thing to do. And number and three, um, Oh my. I don't know. All right. All you can think of is two, huh? Sports <laughs> and sewing. That would break. Yeah, I'm blocking yeah. right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, question number two You're playing a trivia game with family and friends. You have the winning question. What topic are you most confident answering to win the game? Entertainment. Like, um, like if it was about like celebrity news or something like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I like I like movies. I, I yeah, back in the I like eighties movies because I grew up in that era. So yeah, I would be I'm pretty close to that same area. Um, what's one country you've never visited but you w- would love to, and why? Hmm. I think I would love to go to England just because of the history. Um, my fiance Paul's been there, and I just think that would be anywhere in Europe, really. But I would say. England. Okay. Uh, number four, what's a sauce, condiment, or dressing you could not live without? <laughs> Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a reason why? Or just, you, I just you, love... You, you, I just love mayo. You can do so much with mayo. I and I don't. I'm not a ranch girl. So okay. wherever I'm at, I am that annoying customer that's like, "Can we sub the ranch for mayo?" So I I do love my mayo. All right, everything with fries to everything, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to know what the best is? You mix barbecue sauce and mayo, and it's so good. They call it campfire sauce. Try it with your fries yep, sometimes. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's funny. We had a restaurant here open a while back, and. And I think and I love sauces. I love barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Can I get some sauce? He goes, "Do you want the special sauce?" I'm like, "Sure." So they bring it to me. I'm like, "This is really, really good." I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Is this, is this a secret recipe? She goes, "No, it's barbecue and mayonnaise." I'm like, "What? <laughs> Are you kidding me?" <laughs> yes, yes, very simple. I love it. All right, last question. As we get closer to the holidays, do you have a favorite holiday dish or favorite holiday dessert? So my favorite holiday dish, my mom, my family's real big on like the appetizers. We don't do a meals. A lot of times it's like that, like comfort food. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had, my mom calls it beef and cheese. Um, it's like Velveeta beef and picante sauce. You eat it with tortilla chips. Okay. Yeah. And for a close second would be pickle wraps. Please tell me you've had pickle wraps. I have not had a pickle wrap. Please what? me more details. Me- <laughs> Back to pickle wraps. Back to pickle wraps. Yes. So it's yeah. Pickles cream cheese with ham like sliced ham wrapped around it and then you slice it up it is literally the first thing gone in my family gatherings every single time it's so sweet, good sweet or sour pickles um like dill oh yeah okay yeah yeah okay yeah i not big of, not big of sweet pickles <laughs> me either no 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 <laughs> Oops. 
We got we we dove into questions without properly introducing you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Elizabeth Mary. She's a country artist, uh, and over in Wisconsin, correct? Yes, I'm now a Wisconsin girl. And could you give us a little brief bio about yourself? Sure. So I my name is Elizabeth Mary. I am originally from a small rural town in. Dubuque, Iowa, which is close to Madison, Wisconsin, where I'm at. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm and um, music has been something that's been a constant for me, whether it was choirs or church choir, um, band, orchestra, show choir, you name it, I was in it. Um, (laughs) I got into the industry when I was 22. I was graduating from college and I had a local rock and roll 80s cover band ask me to come audition for them. And so I actually turned down a huge job opportunity out of college um, to pursue this cover band. And I was on my last interview with this man from in Colorado. And he was just like, good luck with that. Because it just was, it was <laughs> as a college student, the the salary they were starting me, it was like a million dollars to me as a poor college student. And so my mom just said, you know, you got to follow your gut. And I wouldn't have been able to do this job and the band because there was a lot of traveling with the job. So I started in a cover band and I was with them for close to nine years. And that's really where I really kind of gained um, uh, my audience and just fans and really built that band up to what they were when we ended up breaking in 2018. Um, And in that mean, in that time I had started an acoustic duo with another guitarist. Mm -hmm. Um, And then in that time period, it just got to the point where I was just tired of relying on other people and decided to go full uh, as a solo artist. So I left my career job of 14 years in 2018 to pursue my music full time and have been doing it so ever since. This this is podcast called Chit and Chat, encourage you one another and I love your story and I love your your, your music and I can't wait to dive into more questions about it. Um, What was your inspiration of writing a song at 10 years old. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I honestly don't even remember like where I even learned how to do that. I just started writing in notebooks all the time. And I even remember the song. It was called, I have a dream. Yep, and, <laughs> and, and, um, I was always making up songs. I don't know. I just saw the world, um, I was just very expressive, I guess, as a kid. And I had lots of big feelings. And oh my gosh, I was writing love songs in like grade school. Like my poor crushes would get poems and love songs for me at like, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. And my mom was probably like, oh my gosh. (laughs) I just always related to lyrics, I think, when I was listening to music from a young age. You've been pursuing this dream if forever what really sparked that inside you to write songs and sing songs I, I it's just like i said music has always been a constant music always made me very happy um i know when i when i started performing that on stages i realized wow okay like when i get up on this stage like nothing matters i just loved the adrenaline rush of you know being in front of people and as i you know started to when i first started doing music like as you know I wasn't doing it full time but in that cover band I realized um when you're on stage I don't know you it's almost a superpower like when you're making music and and to have people come and watch you and listen to you so when I started to go solo and then really write my own stuff I think being able to relate to people and and with songs, you know, and lyrics and make people, you know, help them through situations, you know, that they're going through in their lives. It's just been this evolving love with music for me. Can you tell us more about growing up on a dairy farm? Mm-hmm. You used to be pretty busy as a, as a kid? Oh my gosh. It was, it was the best. You know, honestly, I look back at my childhood and my parents are the absolute best. We um, you, we would have never known. It's my sister and I have a younger sister. She's three years younger than I am. Jenny, I guess she goes by Jen. Now I call her Jenny still. Um, but, uh, my dad was blessed with two very girly farm girls. So, um, we, it was probably for the best that we didn't help him with the chores. My dad is probably one of the hardest working guys I know. And we had, um, you know, 400 acre farm and, he milked 175 plus cattle by himself. And, um, 
you know, we didn't have neighbors. We didn't, we didn't have neighborhoods. So when mom, mom worked full time, we were home in the summers, we really had to rely on ourselves to keep ourselves busy. So honestly, (laughs) we would make music videos and we had a golf cart, a lawnmower and a video camera. And we made more music videos than I can even (laughs) count. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> but I think too, it made us like, I, you know, if I ever said I was bored, oh man, we'd be right to work. So it was like, we, I, I, I don't even think I realized growing up how simple life was for us. My parents made us feel like we had everything when, you know, really we, we didn't, my parents worked really hard to put us where we were. Um, so I had a really happy childhood. It was really good. Did your parents really give you encouragement, you know, singing and writing songs at a young age? Did they like, go, go play Barbie doll or something. (laughs) So like, I say this to my mom now that, now that I have my own kiddo, it's so funny because my mom worked full time. My dad worked, oh my gosh, 80, 90 hours plus a week. And they'd come in the house and I'd be like, guys, guys, we put, we have a show and you need to sit down. And my mom was like, this is the last, but there they would sit. They would sit and watch everything we did for the day. Um, I remember I, my parents, my whole family worked at this golf course in um, East Dubuque, Illinois called the Como golf course. And we would go there for their fish fries. And, um, mm. you know, parents were at the bars and not, they were not heavy drinkers, but they were socializing. And my sister and I would go into the bathroom cause there was a, or like a, a couch thing in this little room. So we'd sit there and we'd sing. And so people would come in and they'd be like, you should come out. We'll pay you to come out to sing. And so we would do it. And, my mom got us signed up in a variety show, but my mom was also very realistic. Um, but they always encouraged us. And especially when I took that leap of turning down that job, my mom mm-hmm. really, um, you know, she could have said, you're crazy. You just went through four years of college. You're not, you're not going to turn this down. But like instead she just said, yeah, she said, follow your heart. And, um, yeah, it's they, they since then, um, you know, they bought me my first guitar when I was 18. I self-taught myself how to play and, always and since i started playing in 2010 you know out with the bands they would be at bars till two or three in the morning just to watch me every single time they have seen my set so many times but they are still always there so very cool what was your career job you mentioned earlier what you you walked away from yeah so i so i grew up in dubuque iowa um and in dubuque there is a river museum the national mississippi river museum and aquarium it's a a smithsonian affiliated museum and i worked there in high school and when i went through college i graduated with a pr degree from loris college i was working pretty much full time that summer and i just loved the retail aspect of the job and i really started um taking on more and more roles. And so when I turned down this job, um, when I, um, when I joined the cover band, I basically created a a position for myself and like advocated for myself to go full time as the retail coordinator. And so over the span of those couple of years, I think that was like 20, 20, 2014 or 15 in three years um i ended up running their entire retail operations they actually had a title for me the million dollar baby because i ran i had a million dollar operation that i was running i had a staff of like 30 i did all the buying designing um and the cool part looking now what where i'm at is i've worked retail into my world i actually have an entire clothing line with my yeah. lyrics and song titles so it's really funny how life comes back you know i always think you, you go through things sometimes you don't know what you're why you're going through this or why you're in this situation but it helps you out and everything i've done leading up to this has really put me where i'm at now so i loved my job and i was so sad to leave but it was just time i had bigger plans for you <laughs> yes he did yes he did so, what was the experience like of playing? You mentioned your, you know, the cover band. I'm, I'm that's zero to <laughs> sixty, right? Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Would you go? Did you tour it and did you hit bars or? Oh my gosh! So this band had been around for a few years. Actually, my parents used to follow them because they were just like this big party band in the area. And so when I joined, I was 22 and naive. I was so naive. <laughs> and so I'm a country girl, and you know, so they were like. I auditioned. I took my sister with me and I remember saying like, oh my God, Jen, I don't know how to dress rock and roll. So, you know, I tried to look as rock and roll as I could. And so they were like, um, you got it. If you want it, can you do a show in like a week and a half? And I was like, um, sure. And 
that's like 50 songs. So they gave me the list and it's all these 80 songs like Lita Ford. I was like, who's Lita Ford? I thought it was a car. Like I had no idea. <laughs> like Ozzy, Metallica, Nirvana, Alice in Chains. Um, um, it was what? just why is collected- Oz wearing chains for? <laughs> I know, but yes. And so I learned this, and I I did the show. So everyone found out that there's a new singer that was going to be, you know, coming out. And so that night, this this club is called the Lux Club. It, it ran out of certain beers because it was so packed. And from that point on, we just started getting booked like crazy. And so I was working full time and then gigging all these shows. And we were just like the busiest band in town playing bars and festivals. And it was wild because I think with that band, when you're in a band like that, you kind of have a facade of like, people thought I was like, hardcore like really kind of cool and i'm like oh my god like i'm playing biker rallies and i'm like thinking ah, i don't know what i'm doing but i played the part and i sang the songs and i could sing guns and roses like nobody else could and um it was an experience i saw a lot of things i could write a book on the things i've seen i towards the end hated the bar scene that drunk end of the night two in the morning 3 a.m drunk bar scene is just not my vibe and I just got tired of it um so yeah I mean it was an experience it was amazing to go through I learned I learned a lot I actually learned the craft of like performing I think with that band okay and I was reading you had a very busy 2018 we'll go through through a few of these April 2018 you recorded and released uh dance with the fear Mm -hmm. single mirror mirror pick the hit regional radio and began streaming nationwide what was that so dance okay so this whole project started because like i said i went to go you know start my solo career and i just had songs i've been writing forever i have journals everywhere and so i said to my husband at the time um i said i i think i want to record these and so long story short i ended up stumbling i was Um, you'll laugh. I'm on the face. I'm on the side of buses in my hometown (laughs) because I'm the face of the bank. And so I was doing their radio ad and the sound engineer was there and he was like, I just opened a recording studio in Madison, Wisconsin. And I was like, Oh sweet. Okay. Well I have, I have no experience with this. So he wanted to record um, these songs. And so I went in and recorded an EP and it, I titled it dance with the fear. My favorite quote of all time is everything you want is on the other side of fear. And so I always just say to dance with the fear, because if it scares you, it's probably worth it and probably going to be really great. So, um, mirror mirror was one of the songs that I wrote and I was very nervous to even record it. Cause I thought this is so stupid. Like nobody's going to like this. It's a slow. And then local radio in town loved it. And it was just, all this stuff happens, people you meet. And I ended up meeting the uh, program director at this radio station and he listened to it and he was like, this has to be on the radio. And um, ultimately, yeah, that just took my career way off. And then I was opening the next week, like a few weeks later for Colin Ray. And so things were just escalating so fast. That's in my next little bullet, actually, mm-hmm. you know, uh, September 2018. He's from mm-hmm. Arkansas, and actually, I was born and raised in Arkansas, so mm-hmm. I, he's one of my all-time favorite musicians. I love his music. Did, did you s- open, how, when you got, I saw you open for Clint Black and Black uh-huh. Hawk and Sarah Evans. Which one of these really, you had to paint yourself going, excuse me, and I went in for who? <laughs> <laughs> um, God, they all are. I mean, honestly, because... You know, I grew up listening to 90s country. And so to even be in the same room of some of these people, it's just and for them to like, like, for instance, Colin Ray was probably one of the most kind person, like people that I've ever met. He listened to my whole set because I didn't see him before the show. And I thought, oh, how disappointing. I don't get to meet him. Like, I was really actually bummed. Um, And then I found out when I got done, he was behind the stage. Um watching my whole set and he was just had so many sweet words to say to me. So they're all amazing. I just, um, every single one, every time I get an opportunity, I'm like, holy cow, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so later in 2018, you came out with another amazing song called Breathe In Girl. Yes. About that, that song and the meaning behind it? Um, yeah. So this, okay. So I said I had recorded with this studio in Madison and um, 
I learned a lot of lessons during this whole time. Life was crazy. Zero to 60 had split. My acoustic duo split. And the 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 uh, recording studio that I was working with, the guys, I don't think I've ever, they'd never worked with someone like me. And instantly when I got radio play on that song, Mirror Mirror, they came after me for like producing rights and all this scary stuff. So I ended up, hiring a lawyer an entertainment lawyer because i was like what is going on um so i wrote the song so all this is going on and breathe in girl um a lot of people have no idea what this song is about because they think i went through a divorce very publicly too um a few a few years ago and people think it's about that but what breathe in girl was for me was all this stuff was kind of collapsing in on me Mm -hmm. and i remember sitting on the bathroom floor and this is where i wrote a lot of the song. And I remember just feeling so defeated and I pulled myself up on the vanity and I just looked in the mirror and I breathed in and I breathe out. And I just said, saw this sign somewhere that said like, you're going to be okay. And so the lyric, I hate to spoil the ending, but you're going to be okay. Um, came in and that's kind of the hook of the song. Um, and honestly, that whole song really changed my whole life. Um, I emailed Uh, a new studio because I said to my husband at the time, I said, this is such a special song. I don't want to go back to these guys that I was recording with. They don't know what they're doing. I'm I'm afraid of them now. I had to like buy back my songs. And so I Googled Madison recording studios and I found Paul Schluter, um, who is now my fiance. (laughs) Um, He owns Megatone studios. And I came to him and I, I sent him a bunch of questions and he recorded breathe in girl. And it was, a two months after I started recording that that song, I quit my day job. So it's just all been this whole moving train of of pieces moving to get me where I'm at now. And that song reminds me so much of a song by Johnny D as a Christian artist called Breathe. Life gets going 90 miles a minute and we forget the most important thing to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, oh, that's just it's that those songs just gives me chills. It reminds us God's like, slow down, dude. I got this. One hundred percent. And honestly, like I think what I learned when you asked me before, like what I um I don't know what the question was, but it made me think, um writing, especially this song, because this was a very vulnerable song as well to put out. I think um the messages and the people that related to this song. And it is amazing to this day what I get back, because even when we went through the pandemic, I had an ICU nurse message me and say, we're big fans, love your music. And just so you know, all of our patients in here on respirators, we keep telling them to breathe and to be, you know, really um, helping them. And she said, a lot of these patients, I'm getting goosebumps even saying it, Breathing Girl was one of the last songs that they heard. And it's just like, you know, wow. like music is so powerful and I feel like such a small little voice on the bathroom floor writing that song, but to watch it, you know, really touch so many people's lives is just incredible. Is that where your inspirations of songs come from? It's just basically from the heart. It really is. And I think, you know, so like I said, um, you know, fast forward a few years, I did go through a divorce and it was very public and it was very hard and it was very cordial, but it's hard to go through something like that. And I think I was very scared of, you know, how I was going to be perceived in the public eye and what people were going to think of me. And I started writing and I started, you know, just kind of speaking my truth and being very vulnerable on Instagram and Facebook and people saw the highs and the lows. And I think I realized like, okay, other people feel this like, you know, and you don't have to feel alone. You know, I kind of write sometimes what people want to say, but they can't say. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool to watch people rally around me and really help me through some really difficult times that I went through in the public eye. And I saw later in 2018, you did another album, Meet Me in Madison. Yes. So Oh, go ahead. the process of creating an album? Do you go with a theme or certain songs or what? So that's a great question because I had absolutely no idea. So after I messaged Paul in Megatone Studios, we recorded Breathe In Girl. I released it as a single. And when that just hit the radio on certain stations and went crazy, I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go do a full length album. So what we did is we basically sat down the first day and he said, "Okay, give me every song that's in that journal that's ready to go right now. So I think we had like 22 songs that I felt confident, you know, where I wanted to put out and. Um, 
basically how we do it. You can do albums, you know, so many different ways. Some people come in the studio with everything written. How I come into the studio is it's the lyrics, the melody and the acoustic guitar. That's it. That's all I got. And um, so we got it down to, I think we had nine songs. And as we were doing the album, I kept, I wrote a few more like sweatpants and wine was one that I wrote while we were doing the album. Um, so we go in and, um, Paul had a studio drummer. His name's Zach Brassington. He's now my drummer, <laughs> but he um, drummed on the album. And so I recorded all the songs that, that were going to go onto the album as a rough. And a rough is basically you play to a click track, my acoustic guitar and singing. And then from there we added drums and then we built the bass and we basically crafted everything in the studio. So I sat right there next to Paul and, you know, was producing with him. And it's so cool to be a part of that process rather than coming in with something just already written to watch really cool mistakes turn into like one of the most cool, you know, the coolest part of a song. Um, so we did that for 14 tracks. It's a 14 track album. It was like a labor of love. And in the meantime, I was gigging and traveling and paying for this thing i self-funded this whole thing and i'm so proud of it because wow. um it was a it was a beast um i'm very thankful for everyone who helped me out with that so yeah it's cool the guys that recorded on the album are now my band i have the best band so yeah the I album process the was cool of, of social media where you're kind of overseeing and kind of watching i believe that's part of all that album process i'm sure yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. It's, it's so fun to be, um, I don't know. I think when, when I was in the cover band, you're just, you know, you're singing another, someone else's song and you're, right. which is fun, but to be in control of like what you want to say and then actually have a, a hand in directing the production of it. It's just, it's so cool. So I love the recording process. And now I saw you're selling your own apparel and it's, mm -hmm. they all have a positive message on, on them. Like, share your shine mm -hmm. i'm not the setbacks but it's a comeback to make you strong mm -hmm. that, that is so cool <laughs> it is crazy to me that. it's crazy how this all works like i said i came from the retail world and i i loved my retail world in dubuque at the river museum and um when i released the ep i had like an album release party and when I left my day job at the River Museum, I obtained my own wholesale license and literally had hundreds of reps all over the country. And a lot of them I say I've been working with for years. And so when I left, I, you know, I thought, wow, I need to make t-shirts. So I guess I'm going to create a t-shirt. And so used one of the the reps that I've been using since I, since I knew since I was 17 working at the museum as a part-time girl. And we created the dance with my very first dance with the fear. And at my release party, it was, I mean, they were gone. I was like, whoa, okay. So then when Bre Breathing Girl came out, I thought, well, I'm going to release a Breathing Girl shirt. Oh my gosh, I sold out. I mean, it has just been so... I just, I have the ability to have really great stuff too, like really good quality things because of my background. Mm -hmm. And so then I realized I, I didn't even know I was inspirational. Honestly, like when I was starting to pick out things from my songs, I was like, wow. Okay. Well, you know, so everything has a, um, a meaning behind it, which is cool with the clothing line. So I ship all over the U S and it's, insane i love seeing people with my merch on it's just but it's all positive and i love being that kind of artist to be in the world to give a positive message like that it's very similar to this podcast my goal was eight months ago was just to have conversations with people and the more i begin to grow and get better in my interviews and everyone has a story of mm -hmm. hope, of being courageous of, of, of you know being sharing encouragement in your opinion, do you feel it's important to share encouragement and uplift your words to everyone? Oh my gosh. I mean, that is probably my whole model for my whole life. I feel like the only reason I am where I am is because I'm such a people person. I and I love I love hearing other people's stories. I'm so um a, such an empath and I love um I love encouraging people. I'm like that one person that will like you know, a lot of times in this music industry, people are very competitive and um, especially girls. <laughs> <laughs> and I honestly had an artist um, 
tell me once I was doing a show with, she's really now one of my very best friends. She lives in Nashville, but we were doing um, a show together and she came over to my house to rehearse. And she was like, I just wanted to hate you. And I'm like, Oh, why? And she was like, but I can't, you're so nice and so encouraging. So I really think that like, you can be the best at something. And if you are just not a good person and not a, a team player, you are, it, it makes no difference how good you are. So I am a huge advocate for supporting local. A lot of my big shows, I wear local boutiques. I support all local things. So yeah, it's, it's a very important to me. I've had several musicians on and said, they, they tell me they have more fun collaborating and giving other people's advice than doing their own stuff. Yeah, really. So it cool. is. And that's been kind of cool too, you know, now that, I mean, fast forward even the story more, and now Paul and I are actually a couple and together and we have a family, but um, I help out in the studio a lot with some of his clients giving advice, you know, because I just think why, you know, I would love to share my wealth of knowledge of what I've, I've learned in this whole industry. So yeah, I think it's rewarding to help people. Uh, for those who are interested in getting some apparel, how do you get some? How do you order some of your shirts? Yeah. All right. So you can go to my website, elizabethmarymusic.com. And I'm constantly um, uh, putting in new pieces to the collection. So um, I ship all over the country. So if you shop there, there's a little tab that says shop. And um, I have all my sweatshirts. I have sweatpants and T-shirts and, yeah, all all the goodies online. We all know 2020 was a difficult year for everybody in the world. Uh, you mentioned you you uh, started something called Sweatpants and Wine. It's a virtual concert, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Think about that. So Sweatpants and Wine was on the album. It's one of my uh, tracks on the album. Um, and I wrote this song, like I said, while we were in the process of making the album. I had no idea when I wrote this that this was going to blow up to where it did. So it was March 15th, 2020. And I was playing a show in uh, Verona, Wisconsin. And I got off the stage and people said, they're shutting down. They're shutting down. They're sh everything shutting down. And I'm like, what do you mean everything's shutting down? And so they said, I had at the time I was still living in Iowa. So I went back to Iowa and Honestly, the, I couldn't even cross into Wisconsin for a short time there because everything was so locked down. And I was thinking, oh, my gosh, as a full time musician at the time I was going through a divorce and, you know, kind of navigating life through that. I was thinking, oh, my gosh, I, I'm not even going to be able to survive. So March 17th, I decided to go live on my Facebook page and put on a three hour concert and I had no idea that I would get the response that I did. I had, after that aired in that three hours, I had over 36,000 viewers that had tuned in across the country, across the world, watching. And I just sat there with the sweatpants on and a bottle of wine and sang my heart out for three hours. And so in that time, in that first week, I had over 100 and of a week and I was terrified so me I'm just very in innovative I was like okay I'm gonna call on my friends who own these local places because they're struggling trying to redo their business plans on doing takeouts and doing all this stuff so since my album is called meet me in Madison I did a meet me at tour on Facebook to <laughs> all these businesses in the meantime I was like okay well I'm gonna continue my sweatpants and wine on Tuesday nights so literally I would get up in the morning and be like, okay, I'm going live on this person's page, then this person's page. I had all these concerts going on, and I lived off of virtual tips and gift cards from these places, and that's how I made it through. Um, and Sweatpants and Wine kept continuing. Well, in the meantime, Paul and I ended up um, officially becoming a couple, and I moved to Madison, Wisconsin, and he joined in to Sweatpants and Wine. And every single Tuesday night, we made it to 50 episodes. Um we would go live on our Facebook and we would have hundreds of people tune in. And it was so cool because to this day I go out and play live shows and I have people come up to me and say, you have no idea what you did for us and our family. We'd be broadcasted on people's big screen TVs and we took requests and the silver lining of it all was my music just spread across the country. And um, people got to see our lives. And then in the midst of sweatpants and wine, I became pregnant with my now almost two year old Elliot. 
and people just rallied around my growing belly. And um, it was a very cool time in the middle of a very crazy dark time. I also saw you made the local regional news too. How cool was that? <laughs> I was doing, oh my gosh. So you, I wish that there was like a video camera videoing me in this little townhouse that I lived in in Iowa because then at the, then the radio and the, the news stations are calling and they're like, can we zoom you in? And I was on like regional news and all this stuff from my living room and <laughs> It was just such a wild time. And then Sweatpants and Wine won um, in Madison. They do a Best of Madison where all the local places um, people vote for. And we won Best of Madison virtual performance of 2021, the silver medal next to the Madison Symphony Orchestra, which is huge. So that was such an honor. I think you're following my notes because that's my next point, too. That, yeah, <laughs> like this exactly like bullet by bullet by bullet. That's pretty awesome. Yes. How was are you still doing that, uh, the, the sweatpants and wine, or do you take a break now? We've jumped on um, every now and then. Uh, we'll do like a surprise, you know, jump on because once the pandemic kind of, you know, started to get end, um, we started playing out live again. But the followers have followed like crazy. We actually, like no one even knows this, so you're the first to even know this. We've actually thought about starting our own podcast, Sweatpants Ooh. and Wine. Because people love, we let so many people into our world and they just love following our little crazy music world that we, um, I don't know, it's just something we're, we're looking into. So we'll see what happens with that. But we jump on every now and then, we'll do specials and we just love seeing everyone jump back on to watch us. Oh, well, I want to wish you the best of that podcast because I, when I, when I started, I was kind of, uh, I, I, put my foot in going do i want to get do, do on to just talk to myself or you know invite people on and yeah I, i've been i've been doing this for almost eight months and wow. i just love the the feedback i get from people and the stories they give people especially yours yours is an amazing story by the way and oh, thank uh, you so much and i saw you're now an author as well as you're mm. putting your books your songs in the books now how, oh my how gosh that about I know my mom just said to me, she was like, I don't even know what, how you do this all because I just, I, I mean, I guess I encourage anybody. Like, I feel like I truly live my life now of like, dream it, do it. I mean, I literally think you can do anything. I mean, um, so uh, like I said, we got pregnant in the middle of the pandemic. And so we have our little son, Elliot Van Schluter. He is so sweet. He's 22 months now. And um, when I was pregnant with him, it was in the middle of the pandemic and it was really weird as a songwriter. Like I said, I've been writing since I was 10. I couldn't write. And I think part of that had to do with my brain was so full of just empathy and all the stuff going on. I just couldn't find a place to write. But as soon as he was born, uh, I was, he was about six weeks old. It was in the middle of the night. I was feeding him, um, in bed and I had my cell phone and I started to just think about, you know, having a baby in the middle of a pandemic really changes your perspective on a lot of things. And I just looked at his sweet, innocent face and I thought, my gosh, I hope you keep this innocence and this shine and this bright outlook on life going through, you know, such a scary, dark time. So I got my cell phone out and I started to write the lyrics to share your shine. And uh, I think it was a couple days later, I started writing the acoustic guitar part and I was in Elliot's room and he has above his changing table, these um, signs that we bought that say like, be brave, be curious, love hard, stay kind, all this stuff. And so it really kind of played into this song. And I said to Paul, I'm like, I'm going to write, I'm going to turn the lyrics of this song into a children's book. And he was like, how are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, like I said, I love using local people. So the a friend of mine who designed my album art now lives in Florida. And so I contacted her and she's an illustrator. And I said, would you ever consider illustrating this children's book? Because she had released a children's book herself. And so um, she said, yeah, come up with the concept. And so um, embarrassingly enough, we have five cats and the cats are the characters of the book. I actually sent like glamour shots of the cats to her to like draw up. So they are very real looking in the book. And we wrote the story, Sherry Shine, based around the lyrics of the song. And honestly, I, you know, this was a new world for me. I've never published a book. I've only done music. And so I self-published it, sold it on my website. And I said to my mom, 
<laughs> my mom is like my sounding board through all of this. I said, <laughs> I was like, what do you, I was like, what do you think? Like, should I order a hundred copies or like two? She's like, oh my gosh, Elizabeth, I don't know. 200 seems like a lot. That's a lot of money. Cause I upfronted all of this. I mean, I work so hard at doing this all myself. And, um, <laughs> she's like, I don't know. You could do maybe 200. I sold out in the first day <laughs> gone. That is and awesome. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so who would have thought there was a paper shortage? What? Like in, <laughs> I went into one, it was such a weird time. Uh, but then I am now close to a thousand copies sold. I've sold over 900 copies, which is absolutely amazing. That is awesome. Uh, <laughs> later in 2021, your band won Wisconsin's best country band. What was that like? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this goes back to 2019. So Mind you, this was after we released the album and the band was just starting to get out and roll in. We competed in this best or battle of the bands. I thought, well, I'm new to Wisconsin. I want to kind of, you know, get into the scene. Well, we placed third in battle of the bands. So we were just happy to even place because, I mean, I'm new to the town. And um, so that 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 winner of that show was supposed to go to the whole day country music festival in 2020. Well, with the pandemic, it got canceled. Mm -hmm. Come 2021, the first place band couldn't make it to the festival. Second place band had broken up through COVID. So by default, we were the <laughs> radio station's <laughs> band. And I thought, this is crazy. So we make the trip to Rhinelander, Wisconsin, which is the Hoday Country Music Festival, which if you don't know what that is, Google it. It is insane. First of all, the artists that they get out there, the people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the middle of nowhere. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I literally got out of the car and I said, what are we doing here? This is so ridiculous. Like we so we did a set of original music. So we're on the stage and I'm watching all these bands go up and I they're just doing all these killer country 90s songs. And I'm like, oh, my God, I am just dying right now. We we are going to embarrass ourselves. And a lot of the bands were close enough to the area that they stacked the crowd with a bunch of people. So when we got up there, all the crowd left. And I'm thinking, so there's thousands of people here, but like right in front, all everyone like dispersed. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So we did our thing and come to find out we won the whole thing. We won the title of the best country band of Wisconsin. <laughs> and we're playing it so cool because we are like, what? And we get in the car, we're like, oh my God. So that was just <laughs> such a cool recognition and just another um, affirmation of like, my my original music resonates with people and how we perform it and how we talk about it. And it's just been so, so cool. You are like a just a joy of energy. I mean, you're like nonstop, and I am just in awe of, of the many things you do. Your mom, musician, a future podcaster, motivator, encourager, author. Any words of encouragement for someone out there who is just kind of debating on, you know, singing or doing a clothing line? Any words that you could maybe boost somebody to just keep going, or you know? I would say one thing that I've learned throughout the years, and I say this, I've said this to so many people along the way, to stay in your own lane. And I think I have to tell myself that so many times because I think we get an idea in our head of what we want to be and what we want to do. And, you know, we're so excited and we're, we're motivated. But then the minute we start looking in our side mirrors or the rear view mirror, kind of looking at what other people are doing, we get really self-conscious and social media is notorious for making people, you know, very uh, self-conscious in that aspect. And I think the most important thing is to keep your eyes on your own lane and just do what you do. Because honestly, a true example is like that whole day country music festival. Like I said, I was so terrified to go up there and do my own stuff. And it was like, just stick to who you are and what you know. Um, and you're special enough to make it happen. And honestly, you know, the dance with the fear thing has kind of been this whole mantra of mine throughout, throughout my life, because um, I, I've said once, like so many successful people, they don't make it on luck. They make it on big, bold moves that most people think they're crazy because a lot of people thought I was so many times. Um, so, yeah, I just think dancing with the fear and keeping your eyes in your own lane are two of my very favorite pieces of advice to give to people. And, and as you wrote, I, I wrote down your quote, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm so thankful for our time today, and I just wish you nothing but the best with you and Paul and uh, little Elliot. <laughs> your music is so inspiring of uh, people of all ages. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the Chit and Chat Encouraging One Another podcast today. Thank you so much for having, having me. This is just so fun to meet people. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care of yourself. Yeah, you too. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. This is Elizabeth Mary U. And you can check out her website at elizabethmarymusic.com. That was Elizabeth Mary, you. Hungry? Craving tacos? If it's Tuesday or not, you gotta have tacos, right? Takiza, tacoshop.com. They're located at the Kitsap Mall. They have tacos, tacos, and more tacos. And chimichangas and burritos and taco salads you get it they have amazing food as well as beans and salsa and grilled jalapenos my favorite their food's authentic made fresh and they're locally owned and operated they got a facebook page too and a food truck with amazing breakfast burritos that's takiza taco shop t-a-q-u-i-z-a taco shop.com their phone number is 
34335 to place an order. The address is 10315 Silverdo Way, Silverdo, Washington. That's Takiza Taco Shop.com. T A Q U I Z A. Tacos, tacos, and more tacos are waiting for you. Are you craving donuts? Not those pre packaged, been sitting on the shelf for who knows how long at your local grocery store donuts. No. And Lone Star Donuts, they're made fresh daily. These donuts are not your normal one bite and done donuts, no sir. These are big, light, fluffy, and delicious donuts. They don't have two or three toppings, they have over 50 toppings, as well as cinnamons, apple fritters, and many other breakfast items. Call ahead and place your order today. Surprise your co-workers or the family with a box of these delicious donuts. Lone Star Donuts. Lone Star Donuts is located at 10876 Maury Place Northwest in Silverdale, Washington. Call and place your order today at 360-204-5021. Tell them you heard about this on the Chit and Chat, encouraging one other podcast. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy donuts. That's the same thing. That's Lone Star Donuts. This next song is by my good friend Jason Biddle called Prison Cell. You can check out his music at jasonbiddlemusic.com.
closed down fairgrounds and um, I'm not allowed to say which one um, and filmed the whole thing. And then we were on the roller coaster in the carts and everything. And they came out, they came over and went, um, you guys can't be on there. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily by then we were done. Uh, but that was the video for It Made Me Me. And that kind of sparked a whole new way of doing music videos. So I just made sure I had better equipment and I edited the thing. And this is Jess Glenn It Made Me Me, as she referenced in her little tidbit there. Check out our website, jessclennwitty.com. That's J Jessica, L-Y-N-N-E, witty.com. Thank you for being part of the Chit Chat Encouraging One Another podcast. Today's podcast, I want to thank Derek Clark for allowing me to share his videos, his motivational videos, inspiring you. As well as Jason Biddle, brand new song, Prison Cell. And Jessica Lynn Whitty, another amazing song, amazing musicians, and thank you to Elizabeth Mary and a fun conversation we had about her, her family, her career. This is Chit and Chat. It's always about encouraging, uplifting, inspiring, whatever words you want to add on to this podcast, just trying to encourage somebody somewhere. But well, thanks for joining today. This is, you guessed it, Chit and Chat, the encouraging one-on-one podcast. What's well, always about 
encouraging others. Have a great day. Until next time, later. This is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast. What's all about encouraging others.